All right, hopefully this is gonna work for us on today. Okay, hopefully this is gonna work for us on today. We are here and I just tried another way to come in. You're talking about me being extremely, extremely persistent about doing our Power Moves Book Club uh, part two of the bookstore with T.D. Jakes. And it has been an amazing ride so far. And we were talking uh, earlier, uh, I'm just gonna repeat a few things because I know this is a whole new broadcast. So please uh, be patient with me because I wanna make sure you get to soar. We're going from struggling to soaring with T.D. Jakes and we talked about how you know many people are not realizing that this is a whole new time a whole new generation of um of of of, of just amazing entrepreneurs i can tell you one thing is that in this book tv jakes is giving us such a timely timely lesson on first and foremost for us to understand that entrepreneurship is the way we talked about that earlier and we got cut off on a few other video, but I want to continue on here. I never want you to forget that the word of God said there's nothing new under the sun. And if you were to go in and you were to look in the Bible, look closely and realize that why would even God have to let us know that Jesus as well was a carpenter? He had a profession. Every disciple had a profession. And when we begin to think about also, there was always business going on. God also commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. So there was a lot of indication that we were to create streams of income. As a matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes 11, it tells us that too, seven day, eight streams of income. So it's a no wonder that God is doing a shakeup for us to come up that we're now getting back to understanding that we must we must allow this time, this pandemic, to usher us into the new. We call it a new norm, and I want you to forget about it. We're not going back. We're not going back to ride across country on horses. We're not going back to riding with the horse and the carriage. Where is the air condition? Somebody help me, please. And then we're not going back. But it's a circumstance that normally will push us into our next level. And so when he talked about in the book in the 60s and 70s, how it was women who went on to the next level when their spouses had to go to war. And so now they went out into the work field when they used to have to be home. And then there was a time where they wanted to say, hey, when they came back and say, hey, go back in the kitchen and work. And no one were like, oh, no. So later on, as women continue to grow, I wanted you to know that those stats, I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again because this is a, another recording, that 4 million moms are entrepreneurs out there in the U.S. $3.1 trillion per year is generated by women-owned businesses. And then 12.3 million businesses in America are women owned. Now, I want you women to know that now you don't have to forfeit your family. You don't even have to forfeit your faith for you to increase your finances. This has been going on for a while. But then now you got a group of the millennials. 80% of millennial businesses are profiting. Well, they're learning some things from our mistakes. Now, T.D. Jakes talked about how his dad, he learned he was a business owner, but he didn't know the administrative or he didn't know the leadership and even maybe the management side of business. Well, this is why a lot of people still in this day, entrepreneurship is a mystery to them. So he breaks down a few things that we want to pay very close attention to. And I want you to think that, you know, he's like, look, you've got to use the circumstance and be willing to build your wings. He talked about it takes two. It takes two things to really like say, you know what, you're gonna go ahead and launch or get to the next level in business where many of you are already business owners, but you're struggling. And so he says, listen, you need inspiration and innovation. 
there are some things that you're doing that maybe not inspire you. They always say, hey, find something that you do for free and you'll do well. And this is why I give so much free value and content because I can talk to and empower people for free. But then when I turned it in and I actually positioned myself in the right industry, it created a nine-figure business. Well, for you, I want you to identify what you're doing now and how you can now be inspired and how you can innovate. Sometimes that innovation is not only innovating the industry you're in, sometimes it's reinvention of yourself. We got to change our mindset towards business, towards growing, towards doing things we've never done before. And trust me, you're going to feel good about it. Change feel a little weird in the beginning. But once you embrace that that's what's required for you to go to the next level, it just, it just, it's liberating. And I also want you to know that right now, while there is such a challenge, especially in our nation, for minorities, for blacks, I want you to know that there's 77% of businesses in the U.S. that are owned by minorities. And what we want to know is, okay, are we supporting these businesses or do we even know about it? But what I want to do and what I want to see, especially coming out of SOAR, is that you become a business owner that also do business with other business owners. Most of the time, we are very comfortable with the B to C relationship. That's called business to customer or business to consumer relationship. Most of the times, we're on the other side of the equation where we're the customer or consumer. But I want us to now identify and say, you know what? I want to be inspired to innovate and reinvent myself to be a business owner doing business with other business owners. So that means that when you're a business owner, now you are the one that says, you know what? I'm going to identify this full blueprint for success so I can be successful in business and I'm not gonna be afraid to invest with other businesses so they can help me in the areas that I need help with. Maybe for creating a business plan. So whether you're talking about you wanna create your, your you, you will need to know your mission, you know, you need to definitely understand that, that, you know, if, if, you're, if you're in business and you're just, your mission is only to make money, you're gonna have a hard road because you're gonna literally not give as much value to either the customers or you will not be willing to invest with other businesses so you can grow. I know that many a times when we start thinking about being a business owner, we're thinking about overnight success. So we don't want to go through the process. We might see and we hear, you know, businesses, especially social media, make it seem like business is always overnight. So I encourage people to have Goals where they have small daily wins while they're working towards a big goal. Just like TDJ said, start small to finish big. But there's no way you can start small and finish big without a plan. So identify the mission and think about, I'm going to tell you this. Don't complicate the mission. If your mission is to help people and then you now die, die, make a decision as to how do you want to help people. A clue is a way that you needed help, that you've come out of. This is the reason why a story brand or a story of business owners is so captivating and interesting to the people who do business with them. They love to hear those small, humble beginnings and hear those heroic stories of stick to it until you start winning. But in this season, you're not going to be able to play around with that jumping around and hopping around because when people like start entrepreneurship and they say, oh, wow, it don't work. I'm just going to go back to my job. There are going to be a shortage of jobs in case you haven't paid attention already. I don't want you to get caught off guard with things that are so blatantly happening in our face. And so I want you to think about a mission. And then now after you start talking about that, you know, I want you to know that um, there are, are things that 
you need to think about is your atmospheric conditions. Is your mission relatable or relative to what's happening right now in the nation of the world? People who are getting in and becoming a solution and putting a bullhorn out there, meaning like with marketing, they're getting attention. There are people literally glued to their phones and their televisions or their computers or their iPads, waiting for someone to tell them something that would bring them hope. And more importantly, something that could help. But most of the time, people in business, they're like, okay, I'm new, and they're not thinking about that's all they need, hope and help. So you'll find that out by doing your market research. They call it market research or comparative analysis. These are words, because I've gone through business classes and think these are words of saying, who else is out there giving people hope or helping people the way you say you want to? And trust me, there's always going to be something that all of us could do better. And this will help you identify a niche. This can help you identify a niche, a spot in business that you can fill that's just for you. There's always going to be people to come behind it. But when you now innovate and then you find a spot where you're like so authentic, but you're bringing people that help and hope and your mission is relatable, sometimes you might not even have to compete with someone in your field. You could actually collaborate. This is where you see people doing JV, joint ventures and things like that all the time. You're seeing people who are speakers. You got five speakers or 10 speakers doing summits. And say we're collaborating, we're all speakers. We're entrepreneurs, we're gonna put all of our gifts, bring all of our networks together. See, I'm helping you understand what's out here to first make you know that there's nothing new under the sun. It's just inspiration and the next level of innovation. And then also, there's still room at the top for you. There's still room at the top for you. I, I, the, the proof about that is that, you know, let's think about it for a moment, right? There was a time, I don't know for those who know who Michael Jackson is. I'm not taking it for granted that everyone does. Um, you know, I think that my son, he is, uh, he learned about Michael Jackson and he saw him with the dance and he liked it. We were watching, I think, like an old Beat It video. And then we went to Jamaica they had like a Michael Jackson show and then they also had one in Las Vegas. So he's traveled and he's seen the reincarnation of Michael Jackson. But he was intrigued with that, you know, who wasn't with the glittery glove and the, you know, shoes or whatever. And, but when Michael Jackson left this earth, we would have never thought that there probably wouldn't have been who? Who would you say, a Bruno Mars? We had Tina Turner, who was like one of the baddest. I mean, she, I, I mean, I was a kid watching Tina Turner. And you can tell I even still wear my hair almost like Tina Turner. I like the, not the big hair, like sometimes I do. But I used to like dream of one. I couldn't wait till I was old enough to wear weave. And I had like big hair like Tina Turner. And um, people would say, oh, you got legs like Tina Turner. I'm like, oh, that is a compliment. Tina Turner was bad to the bone. But then we ended up with a Beyonce. So don't ever think that there's no way that you can inspire people through innovation and find your spot and find your spot where you can grow. And so after you do and you think about identifying those mission, when you identify your mission and then now you start to identify your atmospheric conditions, like meaning, you know, what's the present conditions and what answer are you going to be giving to the world at this time? And now you do your market research and sometimes it may not be comp competition. It might be collaboration that you might be able to see. And then now you want to look at the operational logistics. Now this is where a lot of people end up in, in a challenge. 
Now, if you're a small solopreneur, even like in network marketing or you're in, you know, real estate or whatever, no matter what it is, every business is still going to have operational logistics. One of the reasons why I kind of like the industry of uh, one of the industry's network marketing is because the operational logistics is called DMO. How you operate your business on a day-to-day -day basis is kind of already established and then you just have to plug and play. But a lot of other businesses, um, you know, is already is, you know, you have to either set that up if you're starting your business from scratch. That can be one of the most frustrating things because now you really got to test and see what's work or what would work for your business at those times. Because would you agree that maybe something that was even working, you know, uh, six months ago in business may not be working now? I saw a um, a documentary and it was, you know, talking about businesses who are still thriving uh, right now. And it was a, a gentleman who owned a restaurant and he was saying it was like a classy restaurant used to people coming in and used to people um, you know, sitting down in this beautiful atmosphere. And now we had the social distance where they couldn't do it anymore. And he just literally started thinking more about, I think maybe it was the news. I don't know what I was watching with this. I had to go back in my mind. I like to be very accurate. And, and he was talking about how he had to shift his mindset and say, no one can come and sit in my restaurant, but I still have this food that I have coming in. I still have responsibilities of a staff of overhead, whatever. So I got to change my daily logistics. I got to change the way I'm doing business every day. And so for one of the things he did is he started actually um, giving from the heart. He started serving uh, seniors and getting food to senior citizens. And then now he said, you know, with him first being a, a business of value and philanthropy, then now business started coming in. Now, let me tell you something. I'm giving you a point here. If your day-to-day -day business is of giving value before you collect cash, it's almost like you become a money magnet. Opportunities and money just start coming from anywhere. I mean... I would have never believed it unless I experienced it. And so when you start to look at your operational logistics and you start to think about how are you delivering and how you're distributing what you're doing, how are you going to get your whatever the product or service is to the end user? And what is the environment or the culture of the business? What does it feel like? In my business, we create that culture with our team. But it might be now in that restaurant business, he still was able to give, you know, jobs versus having to let all his staff go. The people who normally would have been the ones serving, now they were in cars going to deliver food. Now, when you're able to be flexible like that and you identify what you're going to be doing on a regular basis, how everything flow, when things change, sometimes you're going to have to change. And then the next thing you got to be looking at is your financials. I always tell people, know your numbers. Whatever your business is, I don't care if it's a cash register or a back office, you need to know your numbers. To think that someone else is going to always be knowing your numbers for you and you're going to be a business owner, you're totally off key with a blueprint to success. So after you've now identified how you're going to get your business or get whatever product or service to market, you still got to identify, like, how is this going to be profitable? Do you know how many people think that they're in business, but it's really a hobby because it makes no money? It's not really a business until you can now start taking it to a point of profitability. You may not be profitable immediately, but if you have a plan to be profitable, you might move differently every day. Which means that your destination, which is the last part of the blueprints to success. Where do you want to end up? You know why some people are in business and they're just spinning their wheels? Because they're afraid to say how they want this to end. They're even afraid to identify even an exit strategy. We've been accustomed sometimes to stay in situations for so long that we're so uncomfortable with that we're always afraid to say that my time is up or I'm doing this to get to this point, and I'll know that this milestone means I'm successful. This milestone means it's time to retire or transition. That just means growth. 
Do you know that there are some people that start businesses and only grow them to sell them? And you say, what? Absolutely. It's almost like a person that is in the plant business. Are they growing the plants to keep them? They're growing the plants to sell them. How many times have you heard people become wealthy where they start a small company and they scale the company and they're able to sell it for 20 million, 30 million, 50 million, 100 million? They planned that. That was the destination. They got to enjoy it along the way, but they got it to a point so that they can sell it and then maybe go and do something else they really only wanted to do at a certain point in time. But you know that that's what retirement was supposed to be for. But how many people are really retiring that way? Most people are retiring on 30 and 40% of their income. And now many people retirements have been cut short. Their furloughs, their stimulus checks, their loans are saying you're not going to have to pay back, but people are not even using those loans to actually scale and build business. I pray that part two of SOAR encourages you to read along and continue to go and come back with some feedback with us. I am very excited about this book and I just want you to know that you gotta know that the future is here now and the future is entrepreneurship. Whether you like it or not, now, there are some companies that are still going to need some help. But you can identify and say, I can be a business to service another business. You don't have to end up being an employee. You can literally now up level your skill set and find out that there are businesses that are still going to need people to help them with social media. They're still going to need people to help them, you know, manage their books. They're still going to need people to help them with taxes. They're still going to need, you can go B2B. This is what I want you to do. I want you to expand B2B. And even if you are in, let's say, network marketing, I want you to expand and think about how can I talk to one person that lead me to many? How can I make, make bigger impact faster? Hey, that's part two of SOAR. I hope this was great for you. I need you to give me some feedback. Business to business. I want you to go out there. I want to challenge you. That even if you're in a space like network marketing, go to one person that leads you to many. Go make impact.